Hi there and welcome back. Today I want to take a look at all of the locomotives that run over the BNSF Marias Pass HO scale layout. So let's get into it. So I will go individually here and kind of highlight each locomotive with its unique details and features and weathering and all that. But I want to say first that there are 18 locomotives, 14 of which are road power, uh, six axle road power, and then we've got four local slash yard power units um, and then additionally 14 of those are BNSF locomotives and again another four that you see there at the end um, are foreign power. So first up is a Scale Trains ES44C4 with factory installed Loke Sound version 5. In terms of modifications that I've made to this locomotive, I added a custom weathering job. And then on the pilot, you'll see that I've replaced the factory couplers with KD Type SF couplers, which are a reasonable substitute for the Type F couplers that the prototype BNSF uses on their locomotives. This is a detail that you'll see I've added to most of my locomotives in the fleet. Uh, additionally, I pulled out the cab windows and then painted the rim of the cab windows black to simulate the, the dark window gasket that goes around those. This is also a detail um, that is common among many of the locomotives in my fleet. And then on the roof of the locomotive, you'll see it's a very minor thing, but the leading edge and trailing edge actually of the PTC antenna array has silver paint on it, and that's to simulate the piano hinge uh, that allows the PTC arrays to be accessed. So up next is an MTH ES44C4 that I got secondhand off of eBay. This comes factory equipped with the MTH sound, but I really hate that sound file, so I've actually just turned the volume all the way off, and it turns out that it's a really nice DCC mobile decoder. Um, as with the last locomotive, I have added a custom weathering job. You'll see that on the cab roof there's some interesting bleaching patterns, there's some bleaching um, on the engine hood as well, and you'll see that among some of the other locomotives. Uh, once again, I've replaced the couplers with KD type SF couplers, and then on the cab roof you'll also see that I've added Mac rail PTC uh, antenna fins. And then this is a really subtle detail that you'll see on a lot of my locomotives, but if you look at prototype photos of locomotives, they have on the inside of the cab, um, especially on these GE locomotives, you'll see these thin white or kind of silver strips on the top and sometimes on the bottom of the windshield. And I believe those are heating elements. Um, and that's a cool detail that Scale Trains has added to their models from the factory. And I wanted to simulate this on the rest of my locomotives. So I've done that by just cutting really tiny thin strips of scotch tape and then sticking them to the front of the cab windows and then uh, if you catch the light correctly it kind of looks like those heating elements. So keeping with the theme of GE Power we have another ES44C4. Uh, this one is an Intermountain model that has ESU DCC in it, uh, just DCC, no sound. Um, and per usual, I have added uh, PTC antenna detail on the roof. You'll see some of that bleaching as well. Uh, these PTC detail parts are Mac rail, I believe. Once again, I've replaced the couplers with Type F couplers and then also given it a custom weather job. You'll notice some bleaching on the radiator grills um, and the midsection as well. Now we have a Walther's ES44AC. This comes with factory uh, loke sound. It's an essential sound unit. Um, this is also probably my grimiest locomotive that I have, so you'll notice some pretty heavy weathering on the underframe, uh, some pretty significant bleaching on the roof, as well as the radiator grills uh, and engine compartment. And this locomotive I heavily customized. Um, I added a lot of detail parts from a Scale Trains ET44 uh, AC detail kit. Um, the only details I have yet to install and probably won't now that it's weathered are the uh, underframe details, but all the pilot details, grab irons, windshield wipers, things like that were added from a detail kit. And again, um, as I mentioned, it is custom weathered by me. Up next is a Scale Trains ET44C4. This is a square exhaust version from, I forget which run, but this does have Loke Sound version 5 in it. This one was actually custom weathered um, by a buddy of mine, uh, so I have not done anything to this locomotive um, except for replace the couplers. 
Now I have an Intermountain ET44C4. This is a non-sound version that comes with factory DCC installed. And though it may not look like it, this is actually a heavily customized locomotive. Starting with the front, I of course replaced the couplers, but the plow was not the right profile, so I sort of shaved off the outer wings to make it the correct narrow type GE plow that comes from the factory on the real thing. Um, I also painted the sort of corners of these grab irons above the cab. I turned the windshield wipers to face outward. Uh, I also customized the PTC antenna array because it wasn't exactly, it's sort of like the, the right dimensions. The windshield wipers are gray on the prototype. And then um, you'll notice, of course, that I have weathered the whole thing. So you'll see like on the midsection of the locomotive back here by the exhaust, we have some heat burns on the uh, the decaling and striping back there. Um, additionally, it's not obvious, but the engine compartment, this upper portion right here, I actually raised, or sorry, lowered the height of that because on the inner mountain model, this is a bit too high. The height of this compartment and also some of the details on it, like how far this upper section comes down, they actually are different uh, between the angled exhaust version and the square exhaust T4s. Um, and I feel like this I don't know, it makes a difference to me, so I did I did move this engine compartment down, I added some little like lips and detailing around the angled engine compartment just to make it a bit more realistic. Um, and then, really that's, that's about it, but that was a, a fair bit of work. For our first bit of EMD power, I have an Athern Genesis 2 uh, SD70 ACE with Tsunami 2 sound installed from the factory. Um, I've mentioned it on all the other locomotives, but I have yet to replace the couplers on this, so that will be happening. And of course you see um, my standard custom weathering done to this. Otherwise, it's a completely stock locomotive. So here we have our first Heritage 2 paint scheme locomotive. This is a Scale Trains Dash 944CW or C44-9W, depending on railroad uh, designation. Um, this is customized with a uh, weathering job, as you can see. I also installed Mac rail, the, the bar type antennas up here. Um, I darkened uh, the, the cab, side cab windows, as well as the uh, window gaskets around the windshield, as you'll see. Replaced the couplers per usual, and then uh, that's pretty much it that I did to this one. This is a Kato AC4400CW with a mobile DCC decoder installed in it. Um, this is actually a cool locomotive because this uh, was previously owned by John Parker, who you may know from the BNSF Fall River Division layout, which is a, a world-class, and I mean world-class layout. Um, so it's kind of cool to own a piece of that layout's history and have it operating on my layout. Um, the only things that I've done to this locomotive are touch up the weathering. It came with a weathering job, but I darkened the radiator grills back here, or the radiator cab um, grills. Uh, I also added a bit of airbrushing to it, darkened some of the the seam lines, then I also added some uh, PTC antennas up on top. These are the uh, the, the long, skinny um, fin type from MacRail. So here we've got a Heritage One scheme, Athern Genesis C44-9W. This I believe is from their first release. Um, and so anyway, I've added a, a custom weathering job per usual, uh, quite a bit of uh, radiator grill bleaching on the roof. I also added a three-piece MacRail antenna array, the full roof type, uh, on top of the cab. I once again darkened the window gaskets around the um, cab windshields, and let's think, what else did I do? Um, I also, oh yeah, the uh, there's a panel on the engineer side of the cab that is painted sort of red and chipped primer per the prototype. And I forgot to mention as well that I added around the exhaust stack on the locomotive the uh, shutter mechanism that allows the railroads to uh, cover the exhaust when they want to store a locomotive, and that is a detail part from MacRail. This is an Inner Mountain SD40-2 with factory installed Loke Sound Select, ESU Loke Sound Select, that is. Um, this model is custom weathered, and then the other thing that I did 
um, to really modify it was change the locomotive number. So I patched out uh, the side numbers and changed it to 1631. And then of course also had to change the number boards. And then in terms of weathering, you'll see that there's some interesting bleaching on the BNSF lettering on the side of the locomotive, as well as on the nose logo. But other than the weathering and the patch job, that's pretty much all I've done to this unit. Here we have a Kato SD40-2 model. This locomotive uh, was actually purchased secondhand and it came from the previous owner with a bit of weathering on it and the BNSF lettering under the cab, but I have since updated the weathering and I also patched this locomotive from 6333 to number 1914. I, at the time that this locomotive had a decoder in it, I installed operating ditch lights and LED headlights on either end. Currently the decoder is not in it and the motor is not hooked up, so it's just operating as a dummy. Um, but at some point I will get an ESU loc sound decoder back in there so that it'll have functioning lights and sound. And then on the roof you'll also see that I added a uh, Mac rail detail part and those are the rooftop air conditioners. Forgot to mention as well that all of the warning labels and decaling that you see on the locomotive were also added by me, just to add a bit of detail. Now we get to uh, our yard power. We just looked at those two SD40-2s, which run the local, or sorry, not the local, they run some work trains here. We have our first GP38-2. This is an Atlas model, and I use this paired with another GP38-2. Uh, which works Whitefish Yard and then heads up to Columbia Falls and runs the road switcher. This, as I mentioned, is an Atlas model. I have customized it by adding uh, ditch lights on the front. There are also ditch lights on the rear that are non-functioning because they are never used. Um, on the roof, you'll see some cool details. I added MacRail PTC antennas um, on their antenna stands and then added some custom piping work that, or conduit work that runs from the antennas to the front of the cab. Um, I added some uh, paint details. You'll see some like interesting striping on the MU hoses on the front um, as well at the, as the rear and then some of the grab irons are painted. Uh, and then I also added a dark window gasket around the cab door and then added a light weathering job. Here's the second of two GP38-2s. Um, I forgot to mention that the Atlas unit has TCS WOW sound installed in it, and this unit also has TCS WOW sound. I selected two slightly different non-turbocharged 645 prime movers so that they sound really cool working together. And per the last unit, I've pretty much done the same things. I added the MacRail PTC details on the roof, on their stands, and then added slightly different conduit detailing per the prototype. Um, this locomotive already had uh, ditch lights installed, but I replaced the incandescent bulbs with micro surface mount LEDs. And then finally I added a small, or sorry, a, a really light weathering job. So we're going to jump back to some road power here for the final four units. These are all going to be non-BNSF paint schemes. And what we have here is an Atherin Genesis 2. SD70 ACE for Montana Rail Link with their meatball logo. Um, this is one of the late production SD70 ACEs with the isolated cab and the filled in um, headlight blank between the number boards. Uh, this has Tsunami 2 sound from the factory and pretty much all I've done to this is add a light weathering job. Um, one thing you'll notice is that the cab roof features a PTC antenna array. This is not prototype accurate, um, but I do think it looks kind of cool, and given that BNSF has uh, acquired or will functionally integrate Montana Rail Inc. in the near future, um, I think it, it kind of makes sense to have the, the full PTC array on the roof. This is an MTH ES44AC non-sound version. I've installed a Digitrax decoder in it and obviously this is for the Kansas City Southern. Um, this locomotive received MacRail PTC antennas on the roof um, and per the, the KCS prototype I've added the conduits, the wire conduits that head from the PTC antennas to the front of the cab. Um, I've also replaced the couplers with Type F couplers, and then you'll see, of course, that it's received uh, a pretty significant uh, weathering job with some interesting bleaching on the engine cab. 
And I should mention too that this locomotive currently is out of service because it's getting some uh, decoder work. I can't get the lights to function properly, but um, once it does, you'll see this locomotive in some videos. So next up is a Scale Trains ET44AC. This comes factory equipped with Loksound version 5, and you'll see obviously that it is in the Canadian National Paint Scheme. This is actually sort of a fantasy unit of sorts though, because you'll see that there is a nose decal um, on the side of the cab that is stolen from the Wobtech demonstrator units um, that run with the battery locomotive that they've developed. And so there are some certain details that are slightly different. You'll see um, the PTC antenna package on the roof is not per the prototype. I've uh, pretended that the number boards have been replaced, so they're in sort of a black primer uh, instead of the normal red. The grab irons are painted. And then really interesting, I think, is on the plow of the locomotive, I've added the MU hose clips that you see on Canadian locomotives. Um, I just thought that'd be a cool little detail to add onto the plow. And so what I'm basically, in terms of this being a fantasy unit, what I'm implying is that BNSF and Canadian National sort of entered a joint testing program where they sent some of these ET44 units back to Wobtech and ballasted them to see how the extra weight in these locomotives would perform over mountain grades. So um, they opted to use Canadian National units, which is why we see this CN unit roaming around the layout um, quite a bit. And what's really interesting is that I decided to do this before BNSF started taking delivery of their new heavy ET44 ACHs and ES44 ACHs. So, um, is this a prototypical unit? No, but um, it does predate some interesting uh, historical locomotive deliveries that BNSF has recently taken. So finally, we have a Canadian Pacific SD70 ACU. This is an Atherin Genesis 2 model with factory installed Tsunami 2 sound. And as with the uh, SD70 ACE models I showed you earlier, the only thing that I've modified on this locomotive is the addition of a weathering job. Well, that's it for now. So if you liked today's video and you're watching me for the first time, if you wouldn't mind, please hit the like and subscribe button. And for those who are returning, as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.